protocol extensions are a power feature of Swift and you will already learn enough about them to be able to use them in your own apps. However, if you're curious and you have some time to spare, we could go off on a little tangent to explore them further. This is definitely, definitely edging beyond beginner Swift. So please don't feel under any pressure to continue on. Just skip to the next video if you want to, it's down to you. Still here? Okay, let's go to Xcode and try another protocol extension, this time a little bit more complicated. First, we'll make an extension on int itself. We'll say extension int func squared returns an int self times self. And now we can say let whole number equals five print whole number dot squared. That adds a new squared method here, uh, which multiplies whatever our current int value is by itself and then prints it out down here. So we'll get 25 when it runs all being well. Boom. Now, if we wanted that same method on double decimal type without just copying the code across, we could follow the same pattern as we did previously by extending a protocol. We did collection previously, but here we have to find a new protocol that both int and double conform to, they both adopt, and extend that. Now in this instance, both types share a protocol called numeric. They are numeric types. So we could try to extend that, extension on numeric. And that isn't gonna work <laughs> because self times self down here can now be a variety of kinds of numbers, int and double at the very least. And if you multiply double by double, 4.2 times 3.6, you cannot then use that to return an int. Double times double does not make an int, that's for sure. To solve this, we can use the self keyword, which I introduced previously when we're looking at um, referring to static properties and methods. It's useful here because it means what ever is the current data type we're talking about. It means whatever conforming type we're calling the squared thing on. And it's a capital S self because it's a type. So we'd say self like that. Now remember self and self with a capital S mean different things. Self with a lower S means the current value. Five, hello. Self with a capital S refers to the current type. And so down here, we're calling squared on an int. So effectively, capital S self would return an int and self times self will be five times five. If we'd call on a double, then self would be a double. And this would be, you know, 3.4 times 4.2 or whatever. So it's a great way to add more flexible extensions. But do you want to go further? <laughs> because if you're still here, I think it's safe to say you want to keep exploring protocol extensions even more. And who would I be to disappoint you? This is definitely not for beginners. This is just for curious folks who want to noodle around and have some fun. You really do not need to know this stuff in order to start building apps with Swift UI. Still here? Okay. <laughs> Let's start with a built-in protocol called equatable, which is what Swift uses to compare things using equals equals and not equals. So we'll say struct user conforms to equatable and let name string like that. Now we can then go ahead and compare users. We can say let user one is oops, user with a name of link and let user two be a user with a name of Zelda and then print user one is equal to user two and print user one, oh, print even, user one is not equal to user two. And I press play. This is false. Link and Zelda aren't the same. This is true. Link and Zelda are not the same. Now we don't need to do any special work here. We can make user conform to equatable by just writing colon equatable. There's no extra work here. Swift can make the equatable conformance for us. It'll just compare all the properties inside the struct, 
one by one. Names, age, address, occupation, da, 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 da. it'll compare them all. And if they're all the same, then the two struct instances are the same. We can go further. There's a Swift protocol called comparable, which allows Swift to see if one object should be sorted before another. Now, Swift can't automatically implement this for us because less than has a variety of meanings, but it's not hard. We've got to write a function which uh, takes uh, less than as its name, literally an angle bracket is its name of the function, and it'll accept two instances of our struct as its parameter and return true if the first should come before the second. So we have our user struct here and make it equatable and comparable like that. It conforms to the comparable protocol as well as the equatable protocol. It's complaining loudly. You don't support this yet. What's going on? We've got to add a function outside the struct called func less than, which takes two parameters. LHS, short for left hand side, is a user. And RHS, right hand side, is another user. And returns bool. And this should be true if the left hand user should come before the right hand user. So I'll do lhs.name is less than rhs.name. Now, actually, um, you can do this if you want to. If you think back to we looked at static properties and methods, you can also put that inside the struct, which I prefer to do. I'm not a big fan of these loose global functions. And to do that, you put the same thing inside the user struct and make it static. Because you don't want to have to make a user in order to compare two different users. All we're saying here is this thing belongs to the user struct somewhere. We can call less than directly on the user struct. So our code now is enough to make two user instances and compare them. We could say uh, down here, print user one is less than user two. And I'll run that. Now I'll come back as true because we're sorting names, link comes before Zelda. That's what we've done so far. And that makes sense. We've added a less than function that takes two users, links here, left hand side, boom. And right hand side is Zelda over here. And it's saying, yes, link comes for Zelda. That's neat. But the really clever thing is that Swift uses protocol extensions to make this following code work too. Is user one less than or equal to user two? Is it greater than user two? Is it greater or equal to user two? And this is possible because equatable tells us equality. It has an equals function in there already from equatable. And comparable lets us know if one thing's less than another thing. And so putting those together, Swift can figure out less than or equals to call less than, call equals. If either one of those is true, we're done. It's true. Same as greater than, just flip the less than. So it can do the rest for us automatically. Even better, just as an extra tangent, tangent, tangent. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist myself sometimes. Um, we can actually remove equatable from the user struct entirely, and the code will still work. We still can say, equals equals, not equals, less equals or greater than equals to just fine. Because behind the scenes, Swift uses a technique called protocol inheritance. So comparable builds upon equatable. It means all those requirements from equatable get built into comparable, it inherits all the requirements and adds new ones. <sighs> anyway, this was an epic tangent just for fun. Don't worry if it left your head spinning a little bit. It was just for curiosity, just to sort of whet your appetite for the power that Swift has with protocols and protocol extensions, and it'll make much more sense when you're further on in your Swift journey.